Welcome back to Profi Plays. I'm Profi, and we are picking up with Shadow Dark. This is our, our second uh, session of actual play uh, going on with our characters of uh, Veros, the elven wizard, and uh, his companion, Serial, the elven fighter. Um, just a quick recap of last time. So last time we established that uh, they're, they're in the town of Kingsham, a little village uh, here. Uh, it's not a particularly friendly village, but they do have a library, which is why Avaros was here. Uh, and, you know, was studying up on his magic, that kind of thing. Uh, but then one night as they were leaving the library, a will came into town, uh, tried to tempt them away. They did not go. They, they did succeed at their a will, I guess their wisdom saves there to prevent that. Uh, but there were several of the townspeople, about five of them, uh, that did not. Instead, they were convinced they wanted to follow. Veros got in their way. They knocked him out. Uh, fortunately, Serial managed to stabilize him so he did not die. Uh, but uh, that is kind of where we are. The Will-O-Wisp has led five of these townspeople off into the marshes to the southwest. Uh, and right now we have Veros lying unconscious on the ground, uh, Serial with him, and that's where we are. Uh, another thing that had been happening as well, we established this kind of background, is that there is a, um, a trade relationship between this town, which is kind of under the, the protection and connected with a nearby abbey that's over to the northwest, uh, but there's also a, a castle that's a few miles uh, to the north uh, that they trade with on a regular basis, but those caravans, merchants, have not been showing up in the past few days, like we would expect. Okay, so that's kind of situation at this point. So where we're going to pick up is right after this fight happens, the people have, this five have gone off following the solo wisp into the marsh, and we need to get Veros heal. That's our first priority. Uh, which, in order to do that, uh, the way that this works in Shadow Dark is we have to get eight hours of rest. And then those eight hours need to be relatively uninterrupted. Not, not totally uninterrupted, but at least no major activity uh, going on. So that's what we're looking for here. Uh, and he also has to consume one meal ration. Well, we do have... Oops, I'm just going to get my pencil. He did have three rations, so I guess now we're down to two. Right, so we'll consume that ration first. There's no eraser on this pencil. Awesome. Okay, so we are going to consume that meal ration. Okay, so he's down from three rations to two. Um, and then we're going to try to rest. The problem, of course, is that we are in a town that's not particularly friendly, so we are not going to be, like, sleeping in somebody's house. Nobody's particularly interested in letting us do that. It's also a small enough village that they do not have an inn. That is one of the things they simply do not have here. So we are going to be sleeping, effectively, in the town circle in the center of town. Um, I, I think that that's the best we can do. And given the situation that we're in... I'm going to say this is obviously not a safe environment. I think it might actually be considered a risky environment, which means we need to check for random encounters every two hours. So for us to get eight hours of sleep, we just had an encounter, so I'm not going to make us count first. So we get two hours, possible encounter, two hours, possible encounter, two hours, possible encounter, and then two hours, possible encounter right as we need to wake up. So we need to make it through three possible random encounters here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll for those. All right, so... And I V6, uh, the way that this works in the Shattered system, as I will just be rolling this, if a 1 shows up, then we have a random encounter. If a 1 doesn't show up, then nothing happened. Right, so I made it through the first two hours of the night, and no random encounter following that. I rolled 5, you can't really see that on the screen very well. Where is that? There, there's the 5. Uh, then, try it again. All right, so we made it through four hours of sleep without a problem, and then another two hours, so we made it, this will be six hours of sleep, and no random encounter there either. So come the morning, as we're waking up, there's also no random encounter there. So we made it through the night, no problem, uh, and so by morning, Varus has totally recovered in terms of hit points anyway. Still probably a little bit shaken from his rush with death. 
uh, there we are. And then we can follow on down to the southwest into the marsh. So one thing before I do this, uh, just a, a couple things about this. Um, so we're going to be heading down to the southwest, but remember we're also following the rune hammer structure. And that structure suggests that what you should do is have first, right, we have kind of the prologue, what was happening. Then we have the attack, which we talked about last time and, and did. Then we have the next step of this would be the revelation of a mystery. That is, something is different than what we might expect. So that is what we're looking for. I'm not going to force any particular mystery. I like to be surprised when I'm playing these games, right? But that is how I'm going to be interpreting prompts and like is that we're trying to look for where is there going to be a mystery that might possibly be revealed. So let's go ahead and do some traveling. Right, so we are here right now. We're traveling from the village here uh, to the southwest, so this direction here. Right, so this would be where the marsh is. Uh, now at this point, remember it was eight hours ago that people left town. So it's been quite a while. We don't know how far they could have gone. Each of these hexes uh, in the, the sandbox generator is assumed to be about two miles uh, wide. So we're traveling you know, about a mile till we're getting into where things start getting a little bit more marshy. And then there'll be a good couple miles here. We don't know for sure whether people are here in this hex or not. Now, before I get too much further, we get into this hex and then there is the possibility, after all, of a random encounter when we get to the hex. We don't actually know what is in this hex, apart from the fact that there is a landmark there, uh, but there might be some other content as well. So let's go ahead and take a look in terms of the content. Uh, pulling up the sandbox generator, when I look at the hex map, okay, and we have different factions before, random encounters, and so on. Um, no, that's what I wanted. Okay. Oh, here we go. Landmarks. That's it. So, so I found the landmark. Then there could also possibly be, be content here, I believe. Yes, there is some possibility there. So I'm going to go ahead and enroll. This is using the sandbox generator to see what kind of content is here. Right, so if it's uh, one, it's a hazard. Two or three, it's empty. Four, it's something special. And then five or six, it is some kind of monster. Here. Roll to four, so there's something special here. So let me check the special table. All right, so the special table says uh, we should roll a, okay, so I, I have not really looked very closely at this. So when we roll special for a landmark, use this table to give a general idea of what may be done here. It could be related to the landmark or it could not be related to landmark because landmarks tend to attract people or monsters. Uh, treasure should be chosen by the DM on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, All right, so we'll have to decide if there's something involving treasure here. Now, the general guideline from Shadow Dark is an encounter should generally give you basically, um, I think it's on a per character basis, 10 times the average character level, right? So so in this case, it would be, we should generally get about 20 gold total, uh, I, I believe was what the guideline was there. But in any case, uh, let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and roll. It's a d12. It's rolling here. And so I'll give us some guidance of what will be here. I rolled a two. A two says we're trying to prevent a threat. Well, that would fit very much with what we have already going on. All right, so so trying to prevent a threat, this makes some degree of sense. Um, I, there is another table that I could roll on. I don't think that I need to. I think that I'm going to just uh, go ahead and say that like this is a threat related to what we already know is happening. Uh, that is, these townsfolk were taken and we have missing caravans. I like the idea of the missing caravans being here, so we'll, I think that's probably going to be what's happening as well. Right, so, what we do know about this landmark, though, when I created it, uh, I have here in my book, because I'm checking out to the side, so this would be in cell A6. Landmark. The landmark is a natural cave, right? So we are in the marshes, right? but so I'm imagining here, right? We were walking through the marshes, uh, it's actually wet, sticky. I'm guessing kind of humid as well, probably. At, uh, I'm imagining that we're in a warmer time of year. I don't know why. Probably because it's been warm around where I live for the past several weeks. We had like one little break where it got like it was going to be fall weather. Um, 
but now we're, we're definitely back to like 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's it's not cool. Let me put it that way. All right. So so imagine it's it's pretty muggy as they're walking through the marsh or making their way through it, but they come across right, where there is kind of this this rise. And in this rise, there is very clearly a cave. Now, one thing I'm wondering, now we would, of course, immediately see this if it were the case, right? And that is, is it true that there are caravans, that there are like wagons or something like that, like we'd expect right, from the merchants that have been missing outside? I think that's likely, so I'm going to go ahead and roll my 2d20 and use the Solo Dark Oracle. We're going with the high result. The high result here is an 11, which is a yes, but. And so, yes, we do in fact see what looked like merchant caravans here. What's the but though? Yes, but. And the, the most obvious thing to me is that we find the wagons. But, but, and the most obvious thing to me is that like all the merchandise is, is gone, kind of scattered everywhere. That's what I'm thinking happened. Right, so so things are in bad shape. Yeah, and also I'm gonna say like it to me it doesn't look like it wasn't like bandits or something like that who would have taken the valuable stuff and left it uh, and, and left what was the rest behind. Rather, this is just like everything's just kind of thrown all over the place as far as we can tell. There, there's it, what it does not look like this was thieves. We'll just put it that way. Right? So everything's just kind of scattered at random. Okay. And we also have the cave food. So I'm thinking at this point, right, uh, we're going to want to go into this cave. But we know that there's a will-o'-wisp involved here, because right? we saw it. We know that there are some mind-controlled people in here, at least five villagers, possibly more, if they're still alive. We don't know how many people uh, made it through. Here, I mean, we easily could have lost some in the marsh. That's that's very possible. Um, we didn't see any, but they could have followed a different path than we did. And also, they were going through the middle of the night where we weren't. Right. So, so that's things that I'm thinking about. Uh, well, I guess they weren't going through in the middle of the night. They've been going through kind of earlier in the evening, but still, it's getting darker as they're moving rather than now, where as we're traveling, things are getting lighter. And I can say that made it easier for us to travel. Um, right. So. So this is, this is what I'm, uh, I'm wondering about now is one, how many people are there? Who is the will? Is the willowist here? But it, it might not be. I mean, it, it does leave and travel miles, right, to go and gather people to bring here right, to this location. And so, and I guess another question would be: Is there anything in the cave? So I think we are going to approach the cave carefully. Uh, I think given what happened yesterday, it makes perfect sense for um, for Veros to activate his mage armor. And so the way that mage armor works, let me just go ahead and read this up. It's going to effectively give him armor that doesn't interfere with his spell casting. Right? So this is going to last for 10 rounds, so it's six so it's it's not very long. It's just like if they happen to get in combat as soon as they get inside, it's going to be helpful. Otherwise, it really won't be particularly helpful. It's just a, a layer of magical force, protects your vitals. Your armor class becomes 14, 18 on a critical spell casting check for the spell's duration. Right, so uh, so I get a total of, on the spell check, I get a plus three, it looks like it's my total. I get one for farsight, a plus two for intelligence. So I'm rolling at a plus three, I need to roll an 11 or higher uh, for the spell to activate. Otherwise, if I fail, I lose the spell for the day. 15. That clearly is going to work, right? So 15 plus 3, that's a total of 18, which means, okay, it wasn't a critical, I wouldn't have needed to roll a 20, get that. But it means that I do not have AC of 14 instead of 10. That should be helpful in the case we actually get into a fight. Okay. All right, so it's actually 14 at the moment. I'm just going to mark here 14 in parentheses. There we go. And we head in. So, as we head in, the first question I want to ask is, are there people in here? It seems very likely to me. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. Roll the oracle. The oracle says, yes, but. All right, so there are people in here, but it's an odd number, so there's a but attached to it. So 
what I'm thinking about what is what is the exception here? So there are people here, but not as many as we expect as a possibility. There are people in here, but they're not alive. Would be another possibility. Uh, so let's, let's let's check between those. I don't know which one is more likely, right? So let's go ahead and just roll for the are the people alive? If the people are alive, then they're fewer than we expect. The people are alive, but. <laughs> We know that there are fewer than we expected, and I think, but they are in bad shape, would be another one. So we had five people that we know were, were coming through, and we also have whoever would have been with the merchant. So it makes sense that there probably would have been about seven, eight people that would have come here. So let's actually see how many of those made it through. So how many people are there actually here in this cave? I'm just going to roll a D8, and that's the number. Four. Right, so between whatever of the merchant's crew made it, and the villagers that made it here, there are only four people, which means we have to have lost probably a good three along the way. Right, so, so we have some people missing, and people who are here are not in very good shape. I'm guessing they're probably not even conscious. Right, so I'm just going to ask that question too. Are they conscious? The answer is no, but. <laughs> These bots have to figure out. Right, so, so they're not conscious, but at the same time, um, I think they're maybe just maybe lightly sleeping is, is what I'm imagining, right? So that would be kind of the weak form of, are they conscious? No, but they're just kind of napping and more or less. Right? So they could be woken easily is the point here. Now, I don't know that we necessarily want to wake them. Um, other things that I want to look for as I'm looking around here, right? So looking around, I mean, I'm guessing that this is a small cave, right? So... I mean, because we're surrounded by marsh, so it's not going to go very deep or anything like that. Okay. Um, other things I'm thinking about. My wife is trying to tip those so that we don't hear our squeaky floorboards in my video. Uh, that's what I'm laughing about. All right, so we have four people here. Is the Will-O-Wisp anywhere to be seen? No. I'm just going to ignore the butt here. I've gotten so many odd numbers. It's, it's too mentally taxing. So no, the Will-O-Wisp is not here. But the people, oh, there we go, but the people that attempted away, at least some of them are here. Okay. So I think that this, this is pretty good at this point. So, so I think maybe the best thing for us to do is without it here, there's maybe, maybe if I wake them up, we'll be okay. And what I think I'm going to do is rather than waking, like, I'm going to look around, right? So, so Veros is, when I say I, I'm, I'm referring to Veros, because I'm kind of treating him as the main character and Serial as his companion. So what I'm thinking Veros is going to do, is going to look around and see, does he recognize these people? And if any of these four is somebody that he does not know as being from the town, so he can assume that they're probably part of this merchant caravan, if that's the case... Then that's who he wants to wake up because he you knows for whatever reason the town just was not happy with him there. Right, so this is somebody who might possibly be a little bit more friendly to him. Right, so let's go ahead and try that. Right, so he's going to look for. So he's first. Is there anyone here uh, that he would not recognize as being from the town? So okay, so let's just. I think it's likely rolling it. Yeah, I got a yes. Technically a yes, but whatever. Right, so, oh, okay, yeah, so, so it is somebody that he would recognize as not being from the town, but he does know them because he has seen that particular person from the Caribbean before, so it's actually beneficial in that we know this person is merchant, okay? Right, so we're going to go ahead and, and wake this person up, right, so we, we, you know, take them on the shoulder, that kind of thing, and they wake up. Okay, so I want to know what their reaction is. So I'm going to roll, based on the reaction table, Rolling on the reaction table in Shadow Dark is a dangerous thing. Because odds are reasonably good that it's going to be an unpleasant reaction. I will just put it that way. All right, so when I pull this out, so, like, seriously. Okay, so yeah, the reaction, it's, uh, so I could do 2d6 plus the Charisma mod. Remember, his Charisma mod is minus 2. <laughs> so, right, let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, Maybe you can see this now. 
That's a zero. Um, <laughs> well, zero to six is very clearly hostile. So this guy wakes up. I don't know whether he's still under the control of this Will-O-Wisp or something like that. It's very possible. At the very least, he is not happy about waking up to see Varos here. Uh, he's actually as unhappy as could be imagined. So, unfortunately, there's only one of him. So, the question is, do we notice this fast enough that we could react first, right? So, that's what I'm going to uh, kind of check. So, so what I'm doing here is it's a little bit different. I'm not going to do a dexterity roll for uh, figuring out in, effectively initiative here. Instead, I'm going to be doing a roll for wisdom. That's what I'm going to do instead. All right, so let's, let's do the wisdom roll. So first, Varos, 12 plus 1. So he got, he got a 13. And... Okay, Serial is not very bright. Serial got a four total. Well, uh, rolled a five and then minus one. So, so and then what about like this guy who's perhaps being a little bit observant? He got a six. Okay, right. So, so that means in terms of what's happening here, Varus realizes this guy is going to try to attack him. Right now, his mage armor is still active at this point. I'm thinking like less than a minute has passed here because. We just went in, we assessed things fairly quickly. We saw that this person was somebody who might want to wake up. We woke him up, and then, you know, he's mad at us. Right, so in terms of initiative order, it is going to be Varos first. I'm going to go ahead and stand Varos up. Uh, then this guy, and then Serial to act. So I think what Varos is going to do, Varos is going to try to charm him, because that would be extremely helpful if we could get one person that was kind of on our side. Right, so we're going to go ahead and use Charm Person here. This is a, again, it's going to have to be an 11. We get a plus 3 on it. Oh, we got a 17. That's awesome. And then he's going to be Charmed for the next week. Okay, nice. Right, so what we just did, when you, it says you magically beguile one humanoid of level 2 or less within your range who regards you as a friend for the duration. So, to wake him up, it clearly looks like he might be going to attack me. So, charm person, now he's much friendlier, much better. Okay. And we've got him for a week. All right, so this person, I need to give them a name. It's terrible with names. So, the first thing I want to know about kind of what their ancestry is. So, I'm going to actually use, very much like we did with the um, character generation originally, I can just roll what is a deep well to figure out their ancestry. Right, so, D12 here, it's a 5, 5 as ancestry means, oh, also an elf, right, so this is another elf, this is an elf who is a merchant, we already know that, right, so this elf merchant is now at least somewhat friendly to us, and then we can ask some questions, so the question that I want to know, now that we have kind of overcome their base not liking us, Charmed them. What's that? I want to know like, were they led here by a will o' wisp? That is an important question. And the answer is no, they were not. Something else led them here. And that is significant. That is definitely significant. So what? So why is it? Like, what was it that brought them here right, instead of going to King's Ham like they normally would have gone? I mean, it feels really weird that they would do this. So I'm going to go ahead and roll on the prompts tables. Right? Oh, I want to give this elf a name, too. Oh, this elf is named Miranel. Okay. Right, so if Miranel, the merchant... I'm just going to jot that down real quick. Otherwise, I will forget. Right, so Miranel... The merchant elf. So we make session two here. All right. So, so Mirnell, the elf merchant, because oh no, no, it, it was not anything like what you're describing. That is not what happened that led us here. So, what was it that led you here? Right, so, I'm going to go ahead and roll on the 
prompts table. Actually, you know what? No, I, I think there's another one that I think I might like better. In the Game Master guide, there is a something happens. I'm going to roll on that. Okay, so I rolled a 24. 24 on that table says, a frothing and frantic horse with a, side, with a saddle but no rider appears. So I'm going to use that as my prompt. So what actually happened here was, was, was not like this is not what happens in the scene. Instead, what they're describing is that their horses went crazy and went rushing right around the city. Right, well, not the city, but I guess around the village, which isn't that hard to do. Right, but went rushing around the outside of the village, right toward this marsh. And naturally, their wheels are starting to get mucked up and this kind of stuff. Until finally, right, the the, the merchant's wagon just kind of hits a rock or something like that outside of this cave, but you couldn't see it under the mud. Everything went flying off, and I would note there were no horses outside, right? So the horses managed to come on, like, come on tied. Uh, here as things are stuck in the mud, and they dashed off. Now, they might possibly have gotten consumed by the mud in the marsh, but they might be somewhere else. We don't know. We really didn't notice. They were gone by the time we got here. They probably, like, this guy's probably been here for a while. I don't know that he knows how long he's been here. Right, so, so something, right, drove these horses mad and drew them to this location, this will-o'-wisp, which people did not see. It wasn't like the will-o'-wisp like, tempted the horses here, it doesn't seem. We didn't see that. Instead, they just ran here crazy-like. So, that is the situation we have right now. Uh, looking at time, I think it's around now that we are going to want to start wrapping things up for this session. So, just to share some of my thinking at this point, so we have some sense of where we're going next time. I think we have potentially revealed a mystery here. When it, things look simple, it looked like it was just will-o'-wisps doing what will-o'-wisps do, right? trying to tempt people into danger where they will, will in all likelihood be killed. But that does not appear to be the only thing happening here. There is something else going on that is dragging people to this cave. Um, so I think we need some more investigation of this cave, potentially. Um, whether it be here at the cave itself, whether we be looking more into the history of this cave, what what kind of stuff has happened here. Because it is kind of weird, we do have this cave in the middle of a marsh. Um, but, but something is drawing people here, or sending people here. They're not all making it. Some are very clearly lost along the way. And once... Those who make it here get here, they fall into a light sleep. That's all we know. Right, so this is something we need to start figuring out what's going on here. So I think that's it for now. Um, so I guess until next time, this is Prof e, signing off.